The Great American Read just shared with you America's favorite love stories. But what are yours? Well, we want to find out. So we have our own book club here. You can join in the conversation using hashtag cover to cover. So right now, get ready for our show. Hello, I'm Ernie Manoos and welcome to Cover to Cover. We have gathered up some of our favorite people to talk about love stories, what they mean to you, what they tell us about ourselves. So right now, we're gonna introduce you to our wonderful panel of guests. Joining me first is young adult author and just a fun person to listen to talk. <laughs> it is Carolyn Leach, welcome to the show. Now from the Houston Public Library, we have that wonderful Savannah Dorset with us. Hello, Savannah. Hi. You know her as the CEO of AIDS Foundation Houston, but she's all about love. It's Kelly Young. Hello, <laughs> Kelly. Hello. You know her from America's Got Talent, everyone's favorite singer, Christina Wells. Hello, Christina. Hi, Ernie. Okay, we've brought you all together to talk about love, love stories, books about love, and what love does for us to make us feel better and more complete. Caroline, I'm curious when you first discovered love stories. Oh. I suppose midway through my teens, when I suddenly realized that the kind of adventure stories and the, the wartime POW escape stories that I loved started transitioning into the kind of, uh, the point where there was a love story at the end of it, rather than just guys rushing around shooting people. Um, yeah. And I think an awful lot of people do that transition at some point. And, and now it's to the point is that I find it hard to read a book that doesn't have that kind of romantic payoff at, yeah. at the end. Savannah, would you say most good books do have an element of love running through them? I would say there needs to be, even if it's not romantic love, there needs to be some sort of driving force so it can be you know, love for family, love for community, and also your love for the book, you have to be able to identify with someone in it or else you're just yeah. gonna toss it aside. Yeah, yeah, Christina? Oh yeah, that's a huge factor for me. I always say that I need to find myself somewhere in someone and I want to fall in love while they're falling in love. Kelly, how many times have you fallen in love in a book? I have fallen in love with a, in a book multiple times. And part of it is because I think if you find an author who loves the story they're telling, mm -hmm. that you pick up on that love whether you're mm -hmm. connected or not. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the story they're telling really is a, sort of a, a reverberation of different types of love like you were talking about. So let me throw this out then. What makes a good love story work? Conflict. True. Uh, Conflict. Yeah, problems. Truth. Conflict with respect though. <laughs> yeah. I. I can't do it where they're just, I don't agree with you on anything and it's just back and forth, back and forth. I need, there needs to be some level of, I think, respect for them as people. Right? Oh, okay. Like Weathering the, Heights, the conflict there is like, oh my God, people just move away from each other. Like, yes. This is such a bad idea. It's the twilight right? of its day, just really bad. Exactly. <laughs> the conflict where you're, you're questioning your own ego and their ego and you're trying to but navigate that. dysfunction make for a better love Exactly, story? because we don't fall in love simply and perfectly in life. And so when we daydream, I know, I know, I know you're surprised. Um, <laughs> when, we daydream, when we daydream, I think we dream of love, but we think of dream, like love conquering. We gotta conquer something. You know what I'm saying? Like Julia Quinn is one of my favorite authors and she always writes these really smart, interesting characters that have, they have issues. And they have problems and they got stuff to conquer. And love doesn't make it all better, but love makes it all manageable. Yeah, if you but don't, don't have you the think conflict. That's, yeah, I think that's truth in conflict though, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to have an element of truth to the story. So you can have these great conflicts, but if they're not realistic or people are kind of like, yeah. oh my God, you people just stop. Versus, <laughs> oh my God, I see my truth in that. Yes. Or I see their truth in that. And I understand why there's conflict. Then I think it has but great But the issue impact. is not... As m not so much I wasn't talking about as conflict between the people mm -hmm. because as you say that that can end up with all sorts of gaslighting issues oh. and, and <laughs> well, you know drama, sorry if it's Fifty drama. Shades of Grey right well, yeah. there's, there's no <laughs> book there if character A exactly, falls in love with character B and, and they're they both never happy had any exactly and, and actually it's what the world does to stop that love happening and mm -hmm. and and that's where the conflict is because mm -hmm. you know the, the as a novelist the thing that you're told is is once you're 
you get your characters to happy, mm -hmm. spoil it. <laughs> and then spoil it again and then make it even worse. Oh because goodness. actually, and so by the end of it, the, every time you get that rise, oh, they're, oh no, oh no, oh no. And it just gets worse. And then finally you get the ultimate payoff. Well, you I speak way end. too much the language of television and nothing kills a TV show more than the two characters getting together. The moonlighting effect. The moonlighting, moonlighting effect. effect. Exactly. Or cheers. Or things that you need that ongoing conflict. Oh, yes. And I will say conflict, not only the conflict between the characters or the conflict that keeps them apart, but I'm also a sucker for the inner conflict where they almost don't believe that they deserve to be happy and deserve love, you know, like in persuasion, you know, the love story between the characters is great, but when Anne Elliot finally realizes that she deserves to be happy and what? deserves to have a life. I think that's a perfect thing that when you put your hands there, that's what a good book that's does That's what a good book does. You need to be like, <gasps> but you know what? It's just like when you fall in love in real life, right? What happens when you fall in love with real life? You, you, you go out. through the high, yeah, yeah, the highs, then the lows. That's what keeps us coming back. Like, does he like me? Does he not? Does she like me? Does she not? Love uh, is yeah. a drug. Yeah. And that's what the, you know, while we're chatting here, feel free to join us on Twitter with hashtag cover to cover and let us know what some of your favorite love stories are or what are the elements that keeps you reading I cut you off no, no I was just gonna say that's the difficulty when you're writing a series which mm -hmm. is something I've not been brave enough to do yet is that you, the, if there's a, a romance in it or a possible love story you kind of want to give the payoff at the end of the first book right but then by the time you get to the third or the fourth book where are you going to go with it? Yeah, but that's so, the smart ones. They give different people so you can follow other people's but love. I, but I also think sometimes, and there's been some books that I've read that I really was into in the first, you know, 400 pages. And then How by then... How the books you read? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a sucker for the number, right? I'm like, look, if it's 500 pages long, I'm going to read it. <laughs> if it's 280, no. No, it's not, uh, worth, my not worth my time. Yeah. But the interesting part I would imagine on the timing piece is that you also have to have it clipped well enough because sometimes you hit a point you're like, I've given up. I don't even care. Like, y'all need to figure oh, out a different path. Yeah. Or, Going But I like the people. idea, too, of the ego. <laughs> like, I like the idea of the ego because a lot of it in when you fall in love is letting go of your own ego and your yes. own beliefs about love and all that kind of stuff. And so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. that in through a whole book would be a lot of fun to do, I would think. Okay, so these are the things that we think make a love story work. Yes. And some of what may, what are some bad love stories that are out there that people have bought and read and Ooh. you just don't get it? Weathering Heights. Well, you are, we understand 50, you have an issue 50 with that. Fifty Shades book. of Grey, and what I feel like and our Weathering Heights are both very because these are these are people who are not good for each other, and it's not emotionally healthy, and and I just want to send them to therapy or something. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and it's so therapy. funny because as a librarian, I don't object to Fifty Shades of Grey because it's smut. I object because it's bad smut. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. We've drawn our line now. Smut, okay, yeah. good. Bad yeah. smut, bad. Okay, I'm going to have to jump. I am a romance novel reader. I, I Oh, no, no. You're a trash romance I am reader. a trashy romance novel reader. I accept I it. better trash. Put the title over my head. I'm fine with it. I have read all the red covers. I have. I did it for years. And then I progressed and I found more developed stories that had, you know, more body to them. But I have to agree with her. There's a line. Like, if you say something like swashbuckling, I'm going to put the book down. <laughs> like, really? Yeah. Or your inner you like goddess. <laughs> I, uh -huh, I don't because... Try a little harder. That's exactly. all I'm asking Try for. Try a little harder. And also, you don't have to rip my bodice in my mind, because that's what we're all doing. We're reading the book, right? right? We're living vicariously through the heroine. You don't have to rip my bodice. Like, tantalize my brain. Yes. And my bodice will rip itself. Like, let's... <laughs> okay, all right. I know how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not hard. I, I, I do it every day. I am surrounded by women. We <laughs> often talk about the idea, men are more visual in what attracts yes. and women, it's more in the mind. Mm -hmm. Is that true, do you think? Not all the way. <laughs> <laughs> there's I've had a, a few tasty in moments in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but there's been a very interesting debate uh, on Twitter recently. A particular male author was bragging about how brilliant he writes female protagonists. Yes. If you have to brag, and, you don't. And it was just the most appalling thing we've read in a lot because he was describing herself as if he was within this woman's mm -hmm. body in a way that a man would look yes. at a sexy woman, yes. in a way that no woman would ever think yes. of herself. No. And yes. yet he totally said that he was the best writer yes. of a woman's perspective. Ego. Okay, yeah. so then that brings out the question for me. Oh, it was wicked. <laughs> best books of love and romance novels, because I'm adding those in for you. Please, thank you. Men authors, female authors. Oh, female authors. 
Oh, men are entirely capable of yes. writing what the thing? most beautiful <laughs> love story. We I'm not saying they want. We will <laughs> allow men to write love stories. But, but it is hard because men and women think so very differently, right. yes. physically yes. and emotionally, yes. about right. themselves. But see, I think just like, okay, for instance, uh, Christian Serrano, amazing uh, designer, he is a man, but he clearly understands the woman's body. He understands how to put clothes on that body. He understands how we want to be presented. If a man can write that way, I'll read his book. I actually did recently read something and it was amazing because it was written by a man. It was written in 1908 and it did so great, The Inner Life of Women. It was called um, Old Wives Tale by Arnold Bennett. And the whole time I'm, I listened to it as an audiobook, and I was like, this was written by a man? In 1908. Oh. See, that it's I can get beautiful. Give behind. So, as we've seen, our panel all has their opinions, very strong <laughs> opinions. But right now, we want to find out what are their favorite books. Christina, you said you would go first. I so, will. sell us on your book. Okay, so the book I've chosen today is called Dark Lover, and it's by an author named J.R. Ward. Now, the thing I love about her is that this book has problems. It has, <laughs> it has, it has, it has the, the characters are imperfect. You and know what, it may have problems, but if you look at the side of this book, <laughs> it has been read quite a bit, so. I have read this book a couple million times. <laughs> I love this book, I love this author. This is one of a series, and she does a brilliant job of creating a story that you can live in right now, and when you revisit it, you revisit another character in the story, but you get oh, a yeah. little taste of that one you read before, which just gives you that epilogue that you so want without messing up their story, like we were talking about with series. Um, her writing is witty, it's funny, it's a little sarcastic, and she has created a whole universe. It does, this is a vampire, Empire romance novel, which I am not always a big fan of. Do they sparkle? They don't. There's no sparkling. <laughs> Darn it. They're you just know, here on Earth. It's I have a theory crazy. on romance novels and vampire because then you can put melodrama well, into it. Well, you know it. what you get out of a vampire no romance novel? You get forever love. Um, and that's what we all want. We or all want. damnation exactly. and no way or to escape. technically well, necrophilia. Well, yeah, there's a lot of negative things here, Christina. We're very whoa, worried. Whoa, whoa. Backpedal, people. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to where it's all good and fantastic. Um, okay. No, but yeah, that's the thing is that you get that concept of just truly being with someone, you know, forever. I think that's what we all want, no matter how much we try to be like, oh, I'm fine with my divorce or my breakup. Like, we want to stay in a relationship long term. So I want to read a little tiny section of it just because it gives you a taste of her personality and her of her attitude when she writes. Okay, so this, just to set it up, so this is whenever the main character and the female character, the male and the female, first meet. This is the first time they see each other. He says, she says, here we go. Oh man, he was colossal. If her apartment was small to begin with, he turned it into a shoebox. And all that black leather just seemed to make him bigger. He had to be six foot six, 275 at least. Wait a minute, what was she doing? Measuring him for a suit? Running, she should be running. <laughs> she should be making a break for the other door, running like hell, but all she could do was stare at him. He was wearing a biker jacket in spite of the heat and his long legs were covered in leather as well. He had still toed boots on and he moved like a predator. Beth craned her neck to look up at his face. God, he was gorgeous. Ooh, okay. I do want to and say, that is why. And that is why I want to say this brown leather makes me look bigger. That's, that's really. Okay, so when you go back to this book time and time again, oh. what is it that brings you back? You know what's going to happen. I why do know do what's going to happen. <laughs> A little bit, I know what's gonna happen. Um, I love their, like I say it all the time, but I love their imperfections. Like the main character, his name is Wrath. And when I was talking in my head about saying this today, I was like saying these names and talking about the book. You know, I, I won't lie, like reading is intimate, not just because these are obviously their love stories, but reading is a very intimate thing. And when you read it, it's like this little world you go into, especially for me. I go to bed at night, it's finally quiet in my life. I sit down and this is one of my, this series, I've read the series, every book of it multiple times. And I just get to go into this world where everyone's not exactly perfect, but they figure it out. And I think that that's a message that I need in my life every day, that everything isn't going to be perfect, but I'm going to figure it out. And so when I get to read it and I get to see that happen and I get to see a little forever love and there's a little steamy stuff going on. Okay. Okay. We're going to stop happy. you. We're going to calm you down. <laughs> Kelly, save us. Sell us on right. your book. My book is The Night Circus. And it is over 280 pages long, just to let you know. Oh, good. 500 <laughs> good. and something. Good. But it doesn't feel like it, it does, does it? Not. It does not. This book goes very quickly. It is so layered. I can't really even give you the plot because it's about two magicians who are in a contest they don't know about. 
Oh. Um, and it is so lyrical and magical. And for somebody like me who's hyper intellectual, having something that I can get very involved in the striped circus tents and every detail and the caramel apples, and it's amazing. <laughs> um, I did want to read a passage, though, because this is also my intellectual side of the story. There is a lot oh. of intellect in this book. Is there steamy moments? No, not no. really. There's love moments. I, no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Love moments. Intim intimacy. Intimacy. Like intimacy. That, that, that qualifies. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm good. I'm up with that too. Okay. So Thank that's you. A, <laughs> I just wanted to represent. Right. So he's. This is a towards the end of the book. Stories have changed, my dear boy. The man in the gray suit says, his voice almost imperceptibly sad. There are no more battles between good and evil. No monsters to slay. No maidens in need of rescue. Most maidens are perfectly capable of rescuing themselves in my experience, or at least the ones worth, worth something in any case. There are no longer simple tales and quests of beasts and happy endings. The quests lack clarity and goal and path. The beasts take different forms and are difficult to recognize for what they are. And they never, there are never really endings, happy or otherwise. Things just keep going on. They overlap and blur. Your story is a part of your sister's story. It's a part of many other stories. And there is no telling where any of them will lead. Good and evil are a great more deal complex than princess and a dragon or a wolf or a scarlet clad little girl. And is, is not the dragon the hero of his own story? It is, not, is it not the wolf simply acting as the wolf should act? Ooh. I just, Ooh. yeah, it's wow. very well, I thoughtful. have no smart alecky comment for that. Yeah. Very I'm nice. Just go back and read I know, it I want to, and, and I think it has the best <laughs> cover the art. Readers advisory list. I it love is. the cover Isn't art of that lovely? book, and I've oh, seen it in beautiful. stores a million times. Yeah, and yeah, thought, yeah, it's Savannah, a goodie. You're up next. All righty. Sell us on yours. Okay, I'm kicking it old school. <laughs> I have Thomas Hardy's Far From the Matting Crowd and speaking of oh, love. Oh, yes. okay. The librarian, of course, is highlighting um, her book. And, I and there's no notes. notes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. All right, wait, what, are, what are the notes that you've put I know, in there? Like, Give what me are a you note. Writing? Tell me a note in the book. Okay. Yeah, a whole paragraph there. Yeah. Oh, let me find a good one. They took me, she falls for the guy who ignores her. Gabe did it all wrong. He should have played hard to get. <laughs> So you so, right. okay. I think right what I'm going to So you're getting involved in the story, yes. making it interactive that yes. way. Yes, yes. And nothing I love more than seeing a book where someone has marked it all oh, up. Oh, it took me forever to be able to mark in books. I felt so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of feeling dirty, you want to read for us? Okay. Um, do I want to give a, a plot sure. description? You okay. Do. So um, the plot is Gabriel Oak. He falls in love with this beautiful woman named Bathsheba Everdeen. And they have all of these conflicts and she falls in love with everyone but him and eventually realizes that he is truly her equal and someone she can depend on who respects her and they finally after much hardship end up together and i get all reclaimed <laughs> <laughs> okay take us on the journey okay Give us here a piece we go this is finally at the end where they get their big moment they spoke very little of their mutual feelings, pretty phrases and warm expressions being probably unnecessary between such tried and true friends. Theirs was that substantial affection which arises when the two who are thrown together begin first by knowing the rougher side of each other's characters and not the best till further on, the romance growing up in the intricacies of a mass of hard prosaic reality. Now, see, here's my problem. I don't know if that's beautifully written or you just know how to read it. Because <laughs> I'm like, wow, tell me more. When I first read it in high school, my teacher said, it's so sad because she settles for the safe guy. And I remember thinking to myself, if you don't understand that ending up with someone who respects you as a person is the ideal, then we have problems. <laughs> I like what you said there. I also want to point out the fact that you said high school. I found so many people, their favorite book is a book they were either forced to read, asked to oh, read, yes. assigned to read oh, when yeah. they were younger, and that those books come well, back and resonate. Well, except that I was forced to read Pride and Prejudice it didn't at, work. at 16, and I read probably the first two paragraphs of every chapter when it was set and no more. <laughs> and I came back to it at 26, 27, and I've read it virtually every year since. But mm. see, your introduction because to 16, it was when it you was were young. it was just horrendous. And, and what worries me, when classics particularly are given to kids and are force fed, they turn off yes. all mm -hmm. classics because they were force fed Jane Austen too young. That's a really smart Or statement, Thomas yeah. Hardy. To be fair. So it, it depends on the kid basically. I remember reading Pride and Prejudice my senior year in high school. And I read it previously because I'm a big old nerd. Um, and <laughs> everyone in my class was, all, all of the girls were kind of 
I really don't like the language. It's just kind of really hard to read. And then slowly they got more into it. And you could tell the ones who had read ahead because they come in and they're like, this, this Mr. Darcy guy is kind of, <laughs> kind of amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, since Pride and Prejudice is not Caroline's book, you've got a few minutes to tell us about yours. Cool. Well, I chose a young adult. Uh, novel. I write young Since adults, you write so I had to go with the genre. <laughs> um, it's called Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell, and mm. it's just gorgeous. And it, it has everything I think a love story should have. It has massive conflict. It's about a girl who just doesn't fit in. She's not the slimmest and she's not the prettiest. Yes. She has yes. big red hair and she's a loner and she dresses weird and she comes back to a high school and nobody wants anything to do with her. And every morning she gets on a bus and there's a boy on the bus park, half Korean, again, quite an, an, an isolated boy who loves comic books. And he sits there and he looks at her come on the bus and he looks at the, the popular kids at the back and he goes, they're going to rip her apart. So he moves his bag off and he lets her sit down beside him, beside him. And they don't say anything and they don't say each other for weeks. But gradually they bond and the friendship begins and then it develops and then it develops. But, and he then discovers how awful her life is. And, and it's just, if you want a good cry, this is a book for you, but you And now I'm gonna ask smile. you to read a piece. Oh. <laughs> for all of you at home who want to enjoy well, I'm gonna, a nice I'm gonna moment. do something you shouldn't really do. I'm gonna read from almost the last few pages of the book because uh -oh. it, just, it just is such a wonderful description about love. And this is in Eleanor's voice. It's, it's a book that goes between Eleanor and Park, oh, almost paragraph by paragraph. Fine. And so you're constantly switching voices. You think that holding someone hard will bring them closer. You think that you can hold them so hard that you'll still feel them embossed on you when you pull away. Every time Eleanor pulled away from Park, she felt the gasping loss of him. When she finally got out of the truck, it was because she didn't think she could stand touching and untouching him again. The next time she ripped herself away, she'd lose some skin. Oh my gosh. Wow. You can oh. read anything to me. Try, I, <laughs> I, I only could get through that without tears because I hadn't read the previous chapter, but it's, I mean, it's just beautiful. And it, I don't want to give away the ending. Good, but don't it, give but away the ending. Oh. It's gorgeous. Well, you know, it as really we've been talking gorgeous. about these, you can add your favorite book to the list. Go to hashtag cover to cover on Twitter and share your ideas, your thoughts. Is there one of these books that excites you enough that you would go and read it? They all want you to, they all held up their books. I feel like I'm on home shopping. Any one of these books. So ladies, we are very tight on time. Do you want to take a chance and play our little game show? Yes. Yeah, oh, With yes, a couple of moments left, we're going to ask you to go and answer these questions. You've heard of HQ. Well, now it's time for LQ, which is our literary quotient. Everyone's got their boards. All you have to do is write down the letter answer to this question. Ready? And we'll see how you do. In Fifty Shades of Grey, what is the protagonist's love interest's name? A. Harrison Gray, B. Christian Gray, 3. Dorian Gray, 4. Meredith Gray. I would read it. I would read it. I, I started with letters Meredith and I changed the numbers Gray. in the middle. Then. I would read it. Wait, what are we on? What number? Uh, a, B, C, or D. <laughs> okay. A. Harrison, B. Christian, C. Dorian, D. Meredith. Might have been more fun if it was Dorian. And the answer is, <laughs> turn them around, I bet none of you. Oh, we're all over the place. B, 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 I thought it'd be more D. interesting if it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is Christian Gray. Okay, we have time for another question. Okay, since vampires came up, we're jumping Woo. to our vampire question. Yes. In which vampire novel is the protagonist, quote, unconditionally and irrevocably in love with him? Is that from The Vampire Diaries, A, Interview with a Vampire, B, Dracula, C, or Twilight, D? Mm. Oh, it kind of could be anybody, because yeah. everybody's oh. in love with a vampire at I some know, point in their life. I, but it doesn't sound like that's not as deep as Interview is. All right, well, let's spin those around, okay. see if you got it right. D, 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 and B. Well, the answer is Twilight, D. Yeah. Oh, okay, do we have time for one more? Twilight. Do we have time for one more? Okay, this is my favorite one, so I'm going to do it. Even if we don't have time, we're doing this question. With whom is Jay Gadsby infatuated? Is it Daisy Ridley, Daisy Moynihan, Daisy Buchanan, or Daisy Dukes? 
A, B, C, or D? Let's see how literate we are. Oh, <laughs> you're <laughs> cheating. <laughs> I'm not even going to pretend. Like well, I we're going to tell you the answer is Daisy Buchanan. Uh, do we have time for another? OK, one more, real quick. I have to do it. The Princess Bride. Wesley fights for his love. Princess A, Sweetness. B, Everhart. C, Buttercup. D, Lovelorn. Which is the princess name in Princess Bride? I have no idea. C, 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 B. Well, that's it. So how did you do at home? We're going to wrap this up. Thank you, ladies, for, for playing. For Kelly's very confused, but how come she didn't have that answer? That's it. I that ends like our show. Awesome. You like I loved the it. It was fabulous. You liked this it? Was, yeah, it's well, so much I fun. I want to thank all of you for watching and joining us. Remember, next week there's another episode of The Great American Read. This time they are going to be talking about other worlds. And on our show, we'll follow it talking about other worlds, including uh, Charlie Meshling from uh, Straight No Chaser will be joining us. Excellent. On, oh, somebody got very excited over there. But <laughs> I want to thank our guests from tonight. I want to thank Caroline Kelly for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Christina and Savannah for joining me. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank the Houston Public Library for housing us in their reading room. We hope you'll keep reading. Remember, hashtag cover to cover, share your stories. From everyone here at Houston Public Media, I'm Ernie Manoos. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.